Hi, welcome to the training series on growth hacking. I'm Ankit and in this episode, we are going to talk about search engine optimization. See, all of us know why SEO is important, but still a large majority of businesses are doing their SEO wrong. So today we are going to talk about how to do SEO effectively, things we should never do, and we will also talk about link building. To begin with SEO, we first need keywords. Keywords are the search terms of phrases which people search for and we want to rank for. Selecting a keyword is a very important step and I can't stress on this enough. Here are three absolutely necessary things that you should consider before finalizing a keyword. High search volume keywords are much more difficult to rank for as compared to low search volume keywords. So unless you have a high domain authority, it is advisable to aim for these low search volume keywords which are less difficult to rank for initially. You can use the MOZ keyword difficulty tool to check the difficulty of a keyword. Initially, it is advisable to aim at keywords with a difficulty score of less than 35. The best way to find relevant keywords is to think like a customer. Think what they will search for when they are looking for a solution which you are offering. So it goes without saying that the keyword should be directly or indirectly relevant to what you are offering. For example, if I'm selling travel packages to India, Travel Packages India is directly related to what I offer while Taj Mahal Timing is indirectly related because a person looking for Taj Mahal Timings has a high probability of being interested in my travel packages. Understanding the search intent of the keyword is very crucial. You primarily have two types, transactional or informational. Informational as the name suggests is when you want to learn something or gather information about something. For example, how to build a tree house. The goal here should be to position yourself as a trustworthy, authoritative source of information. On the other hand, you have transactional keywords which indicate an intent to complete a transaction. For example, buy Nexus 5. Now that we know how to find and pick good keywords, you can look at the AdWords Keyword Planner tool from Google to find relevant keywords and get their search volume data. This tool is quite well known, but there are two more tools which are worth a mention. Uber Suggest, which is a free tool which helps you generate relevant keyword ideas, and Keyword Spy, which helps you track and report the most profitable and important keywords which your competitors are using. Google Correlate is an excellent tool for coming up with out of the box keyword ideas. It basically helps you find other keywords which follow the same search patterns as your primary keyword. For example, if I'm a food blogger and I talk about red wine, when you enter red wine as a keyword in Google Correlate, you find out that cheese is also a keyword which follows the same search patterns as red wine. So basically, I can use this tool to find other topics on which I can create blog posts and cater to the same audience. Now, this is one problem which I really like to see as it happens when you actually start ranking for your desired keywords. See, a lot of people do not receive actual conversions from the traffic which they receive from certain keywords. But the problem is that they've put in all the time and effort to actually make their content rank for it already. So before shortlisting down and finalizing on your keyword list, it is a wise decision to probably run a small PPC campaign for a short amount of time on a small budget to see how your keyword list actually performs. Once you've already started receiving some search traffic, the best thing to do is find those keywords which are driving maximum conversions on your website and then find other related terms and keywords which are similar to the keywords which are driving conversions on your website. So for example, if invitation cards as a keyword is working for me, I could also look at other related terms which could be greeting cards or hallmark cards and then aim at ranking my website for these keywords as well. Now that we have zeroed down on a list of keywords, the next step would be to optimize your website so that it ranks better. Website optimization can actually be done on two levels. One is website wide level which is in general and not focused on any specific keyword and second is content level optimization which is focused for particular content and specific keywords. The two most important factors when optimizing your website in general are domain name relevance and the overall user experience. So if your domain name itself contains a very important keyword, that's a very good start. If not, it's still not a deal killer. User experience is a very important factor and it is so important that Google publicly admits to ranking websites with a better user experience higher than others. What constitutes a better user experience? First, intuitive navigation. Your navigation bar should be in a predictable location. More frequently visited links should be easier to spot. Links should be colored differently. A correct internal linking structure and stuff like that. Second, your website should be responsive and mobile friendly so that it loads fine on multiple devices and browsers. Third, your website should be quick to load and should have a low response time. Google also provides a very good tool for this called PageSpeed Insights using which you can get a score on your website speed and this response time. 
You can also consider using a content distribution network to improve your website speed. A better user experience is very beneficial for your website as it will help you get more page views for every visit on your website, a reduced bounce rate and more people bookmarking your website. The second level of optimizing your website is optimizing the website's content for specific keywords. A good detailed article is what your readers need and which is why content length is very important. It is very unlikely that an article which is less than 350 words is going to make your audience any wiser. A company called SERP IQ recently ran a test in which they analyzed the results, the top 10 results for over 20,000 keywords and they found a very interesting pattern that a large majority of pages which took these top 10 spots were all more than 2,000 words. Of course, you need to write original unique content which adds value for your readers. Google is very good at detecting content which is duplicate or is rewritten or spun. Content that you write should be engaging for your readers. Feel free to ask questions or ask them to share their experiences relating to the topic you are covering. This will help make the content more interactive and will increase the number of comments you receive. Use your keywords or describe the image using the alt and title tags. Enter your keywords or use your keywords in the images file name and create relevant image captions. So an internal link is a link which goes from one page on a website to a different page on the same website. Intelligent internal linking is crucial to your website's SEO success, yet it is often overlooked. It helps users navigate your website, it helps establish the information hierarchy of your website from a search engine's point of view and more importantly help, help spread the link juice around your website. Make sure you use the important keyword of a page you are pointing to in the anchor text of the link pointing to it. The title tag is important in defining what the page is about and Google takes this seriously. So make sure you use your important keywords in the title tag of the page. Headings are your H1 to H6 tags. Normally I use my H1 tag only once and it is the same as the page's title. And then I use my H2 tags to define the subheadings of the content. This helps Google understand the structure of the content in my page. Two important meta tags for search engine optimization are the keywords meta tag and the description meta tag. Make sure that you include your important keywords in the keyword meta tag and create a meaningful description of your page in the description meta tag again which should include your keywords. Alright, so now that you have optimized your website on a website level and the content level, you are still competing with hundreds and thousands of websites who have done the same. The way Google sees your website better than those other websites is by analyzing the links which are pointing to you. So three techniques which are very very popular yet very incorrect to follow. First, bulk submissions. You definitely don't need those thousands of directory submissions, article submissions or comment submissions. Second, mass link building. I mean, not just these bulk submissions, any form of link building which is done in bulk to create thousands of, you know, hundreds of unnatural links pointing to your website is going to do you more harm than any good. And third is buying links. So if you're buying links from any website or using any blog networks, it would definitely give you traffic in the short term. But at the end of the day, the, all these techniques lead you only to the Google's sandbox. What you actually need is natural, high authority and relevant links pointing to your website. This pretty much sums up what link building should be. Next, we'll take a look at four professional link building techniques which you can start using from today. The first technique is broken link building. First, you need to identify a list of pages, high authority relevant pages, which have broken links. You can use a tool like Domain Hunter Plus or Zenu Links Loop to do that. There are plenty of tutorials on the internet which show you how to use these tools. You are basically going to compile a list of pages which are relevant to your niche and have broken links. And then you are going to contact the owner of these websites asking them or pointing to them that these links are broken with an alternate link which they can use. Here is an email template which I used to do that, which you can see on the screen right now. Second technique is to use Harrow. It is a very good resource to build high authority and very relevant links pointing to your website. Let me put it this way. Do you know the place where journalists, writers or bloggers go to when they need a technical subject matter expert or they need technical information pertaining to a subject? This place is called Harrow, which is made for journalists actually and reporters and it stands for help a reporter out. It's very simple actually. The way it works is you basically subscribe to this site and each day you will get up to three emails filled with article ideas and the information the reporters need. Find articles which are very relevant to your niche and then send you know very relevant research statistically backed answers. All reporters cite source of information and they quote you in the article and this is how you get the link. 
The third technique is to write a testimonial. Websites love showcasing testimonials and when you write one for your service provider, you have a chance of getting a link back to your website. In case your service provider does not give a link back to your website, just send them an email asking them to link your company's name to the company's website and it works all the time. The fourth technique is to use infographics. Attractive infographics on a hot topic in your niche are basically link magnets. Not only can you list them on numerous infographic directories which give a link back to your website, but you can also do an outreach campaign contacting fellow bloggers in your niche and asking them to share the infographics with their readers. Good and well-designed infographics do very well on websites like Reddit as well. Alright, so that's it. With this, we are ending this short video on search engine optimization. I hope it helped you. Feel free to share your feedback and I would really appreciate if you do that. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me directly at my email address mentioned above. And in the next episode, we are going to talk about guest posting and using community participation to build traction and acquire users for your product. Thank you.